everybody, Professor Benalou here with the second of two videos regarding the board discussion board. This I will be going over the topics individually. Okay, the first one is Reaganomics. This is where you can analyze the document where President Reagan discusses um, taxes of the Economic Recovery Tax Act. When Reagan was sworn in the office in January 1981, the economy was suffering from inflation and slow economic growth that had plagued both um, Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter. To increase every American's spending money, Reagan instituted what would become known as Reaganomics. He put into place tax cuts for the wealthy, basically stating that the wealth would trickle down the lower and middle classes. The key to figuring out how successful Reaganomics was is looking at how lower middle class families fared under Reagan, to be honest with you. Okay, so that is that part. Reagan was a proponent of smaller government. He felt that the middle class would benefit from more simplified tax codes. He slashed $41 billion, which was a lot from the federal budget. And much of that was cut from social programs. Supply side economics believed that cutting taxes would benefit business and benefit the middle class. The Tax Equity and Responsibility Act, which is what Reagan is discussing in the document you can choose for this topic, is closed tax loopholes and restricted benefits and pension plans. This was Reagan's way of dealing with the federal debt without raising taxes. However, it didn't really do as much good as they had hoped. It raised some money, but didn't help out a whole lot. Okay, the gap between the rich and the poor continued to grow during Reagan's eight years in office. He did not increase the minimum wage during his presidency. Federal funding for things like firefighters, policemen, and education were all cut during his time in office. The two hardest hit households were single mother households and African American households. 1984, he further slashed tax rates for the wealthy, causing an even larger federal deficit. So that is the Reaganomics topic. The second topic you can choose from is the first Gulf War. This surrounds President George H.W. Bush's speech in front of the United Nations General Assembly in October 1990. We will get to that in a moment. But just background information on the first Gulf War. August 2nd, 1990, Iraqi forces invaded and took over Kuwait. Kuwait is a very oil-rich nation. President Bush immediately demanded the withdrawal of Iraqi forces. Saudi Arabia accepted U.S. coalition forces into the country to protect them from a potential Iraqi invasion. What you have to understand is during the first Gulf War, the United States was the head of the United Nations coalition forces. And Saudi Arabia became the base for the United Nations coalition forces because the Saudis figured, well, if the Iraqis are invading and taking over Kuwait, we're an oil rich nation, we'll be next. Since the U.S. had been an ally of Iraq for many years, Saddam Hussein felt the U.S. would not militarily intervene when he invaded Kuwait. He greatly underestimated the United States. Coalition forces quickly liberated Kuwait and headed into Iraq. Even though the coalition forces had won the war, Saddam Hussein remained in power. A lot of people criticized former President George H.W. Bush for that, saying, oh, he should have ousted him from power in the early 1990s. But what you got to understand is this. Ousting Saddam Hussein from power in 1991 would have created a power vacuum in the Middle East, Middle East has notoriously been known as an area of unstable area of the world. It would have made it even more so, okay, with a power vacuum. When George H.W. Bush gave the speech in front of the United Nations General Assembly, October 1st, 1990. This speech occurred a little over two months after the Iraqi invasion in Kuwait, takeover of Kuwait, excuse me. Bush condemned the Iraqi invasion and called on the members of the United Nations to demand a return of Kuwait. He states that the United Nations can aid nations to band together and prevent aggression and punish those responsible. So that was the first Gulf War topic. Rise of conservatism, the election of 1992. Pat Buchanan, a conservative commentator, had been a contender for the Republican nomination. Excuse me. He lost to President George H.W. Bush. August 17, 1992, Buchanan gave the speech supporting the re-election of Bush at the Republican National Convention. In the speech, he discusses what he calls a culture war occurring throughout America. What was the culture war he was referring to? Are liberals and conservatives still debating the same topics today? 
He then states how George H. W. Bush is the right man to lead the nation through its current difficulties. Okay, the very last topic you can t choose from is the tear down this wall speech. Reagan gave the speech in front of the Berlin Wall in June of 1987. This is really interesting and one of the most iconic moments of the end of the Cold War. Okay, during the speech, Reagan urged an end to the Cold War with democracy spreading to those nations under communist rule. He emphasized the hardships endured by Berliners since the wall had been built in 1961. The dismantling of the wall began in November 1989 after the East German government collapsed. Reasonings behind the collapse of the East German government, firstly, the economy in East Germany was on the decline. Soviet Premier Gorbachev had urged the East Germans to impose economic reforms like he had done in the Soviet Union, but they did not do that. Many East Germans ended up flocking the embassies requesting to be led into West Germany. November 1989, East German leader Eric Honecker resigned and East Germans were let into West Germany. Those are the four topics that you can choose from. I hope this discussion has helped you. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to let me know and dive into this Unit 4DB.